Hi everyone, welcome to blog six, um, where we're talking about the CNL role as a safety protector for the patient and the microsystem. Um, the first question that we were asked to address this week is what roles and values would you use to improve patient care quality and safety? And I feel like this is a question that could be answered for a year. I mean, there's so many parts of the CNL roles and responsibilities and obligations, I would say, that are intricately tied to patient safety. And in fact, when you really get down to the base of it, the CNL role was created for patient safety because we know that the catalyst for the creation of the role was to err as human. Uh, you know, the Hallmark study that talks about medical errors being the cause of fragmentation of care and lack of communication between inter interdisciplinary teams. And um, the CNO role was created to solve that. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, um, that continues to be a problem. And the only answer really is to continue to add CNLs to units to be able to have that lateral integration of care to prevent those uh, communication and um, additionally then uh, patient safety issues. And going along with that, uh, the Reed article had a really great graphic um, in table two that really lined up um, the uh, values of the CNL with uh, qualities and then how that leads to patient safety advocacy. Um, so I really felt like that was the, uh, for me, really like clarified, these are the ways that the CNL um, just really proves uh, how that's all very linked. So a really good example of that would be um, as a clinical outcomes manager because of the clinician, um, the CNL is assuming accountability for healthcare outcomes for a specific group of clients within a unit or a setting recognizing the influence of the meso and macro systems on the microsystem. So these are things that we know the CNL is responsible for as an example. So when we think about that, that accountability um, naturally speaks to patient safety, but it also makes it patient centered. And we know that if the care is patient centered, that the patient is more engaged in care and is more participatory in care, which creates a safer environment for that patient. So this whole table really sums up, these are what the characteristics are, these are what you know our assumptions are, and this is how that helps the patient. So I thought that was a really great um, specific way to look up those things. And then question two, which tools do you think might be most useful in achieving this goal? Um, so throughout our readings this week, we talked about how Prescani scores can um, really show us if we're doing an effective job um, for RN education, um, as well as discharge instructions being clarified. Uh, which are essential for patient safety, both in the hospital because of the communication there um, between the RN and the patient, as well as at discharge, that the patient is able in that continuum of care um, that the CNL is focused on to be able to create a situation for the patient once they get home that they can continue that environment of safety. Um, also, the NDNQI scores show us directly within the microsystem, the MESO system, and the macro system, um, you know, at each level for Sentinel events, um, what is working and isn't working, right? Because we can see if falls aren't going down, 
if pressure ulcers keep happening, if cavities keep happening, then there needs something to be changed because that can really be a catalyst of change. Look, we know um, because quantifiably these things are getting worse or are staying the same. In any case, they're not getting better. What can we do to do that? to change them um, to create a safer environment for our patients and then we can also use the risk analysis and quality improvement tools um, that are given to us so in her lecture dr wilcox um, spoke about the differences between risk analysis and quality improvement and that had been something that was um not super clear to me before that lecture that I felt like um, once I had finished with that I really understood the difference and how those um, two things work together and also the importance of um, having both a department for risk and also being aware of those issues on the microsystem for them to be, able to be able to function in tandem for the betterment of the patient experience and for patient safety. Um, so just as an example, a root cause analysis is something that's beneficial because it really breaks down the situations um, that are happening on the unit. And when you are doing that and you're saying, hey, this is what is really causing this, what is really the issue that needs to be changed so that we're not just plugging the dam, that we're slowing down the flow of the river. And um, that would be those really issues that are ripe for change on the unit that then uh, really creates the situations for the CNL where they can impact change. Um, then for the third question, where do you fall on the diffusion of innovation continuum and your current coworkers? <laughs> so <laughs> the funny story is that um, I think most people know that I work in long-term care. I'm the night supervisor in a 311 bed facility. Uh, although right now we're at like 186, I think, uh, the last night I worked. So we just got an EMAR two years ago. We had been paper charting until two years ago, and I still have people that are complaining about having to type. It is like kindergarten typing in this place. It's all one finger at a time. It's like mortifying. And um, so I would say it's it's a lot of people that are late ado adopters. They just really have a hard time with change. And I think um, that's part of the reason that people have been there so long is that we just, you know, the, the turnover even now comparatively to other places has been lower than you would think for a facility that really um, has been struggling because people are just afraid of what else is out there. Um, for me, I'd say I'm generally an early adopter innovator. So I, uh, I'm, I'm always interested in something that's new and different. I want to see how that's going to help um, fix what isn't working. So uh, a really good example of this is we, uh, our staffing person retired after like 30 years. She'd been there forever. And the person that's coming on hadn't worked, although she had worked in the county, um, in other, um, you know, staffing situations, she hadn't worked for the Canes long-term care specifically. In fact, she'd been working at the jail and was doing all their staffing. And then she came on to the long-term care sector of the county, which is where I work. And um, she definitely had some different ideas about how the staffing was going to be done, um, which is similar, more similar, I think, to some of the other locations of the, there's four campuses of long-term cares within our county. And she had learned at one specific one, and our administrator was trying to have something that was more um, congruent with what they were doing. And um, I'm pretty excited about it because it's way more organized than we had been doing before. I mean, before we had a clipboard with like a bunch of days of staffing on it, it was not 
you know, if you drop that clipboard, forget it. And um, our new staffing person is really trying to sort that out. And people hate it. <laughs> they hate it. But I really was like, look, the way we were doing it wasn't working. Like, this is something that we can try. If it doesn't work, okay, then we build off of it. But clearly the way we were doing it before wasn't working. And um, it's really hard to get people on board with those kind of things. Because it, it continuously, it's, that's not the way we've done it here. Constantly. Okay, that is not working. So let's try something different. Um, and I think that's really how I get my staff on board. As I say, look, you know that there was a problem here. We can either continue to have a problem or we can approach it and try and fix it. And when I kind of give them the point that, you know, it already wasn't working, um, it can really change minds. And so that's something that I'll continue to do um, to try and do that. I think also it's important to, to keep in mind, I don't think that we're all in a solid state as far as that goes. I think it depends on the situation and um, your comfort level with what the change is about. Um, and although I generally would say that I'm you know, one of the first on board, I'm either the innovator or the um, early adopter. I, I don't think that that's probably always true. I think that there, um, it, it, you know, it definitely is a continuum. And although um, I think that the people in this class generally would agree that we're kind of the first to get on board, you know, that's not always true. And so I think we have to give people grace. Um, when they're doubtful that they, you know, it, it might not sound like, uh, you know, it's going to be an effective solution for them, but to continue to try and to understand that there is difficulty and change um, for all people. And so um, while being comfortable with change, I think you also have to be able to um, accept and be supportive of people that struggle with it um, because as the coach mentor leader of the unit you really have to be able to support people and to help them through those changes um, I, 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 all you can do is focus on the fact that the patient's care and the patient's safety is at the heart of all changes that we're making. And I don't think that any staff is going to be um, in argument with that. Because when it comes down to it, that's why we're there. And I don't think that there's any um, really anyone that you're going to get commitment to the patient for they're not going to um, be dissuaded if you're reminding them that it's for the patient and for the safety of the patient in the unit. I think that's something that people can all get on board with. And um, it really, again, emphasizes that uh, relationship building and the lateral integration of care. Um, I thought this was a really interesting week and definitely um, one of my favorite quotes from this week was um, from Reed, which I found to be a really um, just interesting article in general. But on in the article, there's a quote that says, the clinical nurse leader serves as the advocate for the point of care providers. And it's been called both the safety nurse and the nurse's nurse for the frontline staff delivering the care. And I thought that was uh, really just a great um, vision of what the CNO role is. And uh, I just hope that we are able to embody that. Have a good week.